In this video, I'm going to be doing a deep dive on one of my favorite projects in the defense space, and that is GeoNet. Now they're coming off the heels of a three and a half million dollar investment round, and I think this project has a ton of potential. Full disclosure, I do have investment in this project, but nothing in this video is financial advice. You should always do your own research. That said, if you do like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. All right, here's what I'm gonna be covering in the video. First and foremost, I'm gonna talk about what this network is and the technology behind it. Then I'll dive into the total addressable market and some of the use cases for this network, followed by some metrics when it comes to the growth of the network and some of the revenue trends that we're seeing. Then I'll dive into the team that's executing on the back end and their backgrounds. And lastly, I'll dive into the tokenomics of this project. All right, let's dig in. Now to understand what GeoNet is doing, you had to understand what GNSS is, and that stands for Global Navigational Satellite System. And these are satellite systems that exist today that consist generally of 23 or more satellites. And there's four that are globally operational today. And those are owned by Russia, China, Europe, and one you've probably heard of if you live in the US known as Global Positioning System or GPS. These satellite systems have become a critical part of our lives and they're used for ground positioning, navigation, and timing. For example, if you pull up a navigation app on your phone, you are tapping into one of these satellite systems to triangulate your position, which requires you to connect to at least four of those satellites in the system. Now there are some shortcomings when it comes to GNSS in itself, with the main one being that they're only accurate to within about six feet. And this is because there are different factors that can impact the signal coming from these satellites and subsequently do have an impact on the accuracy of the location data. Now this includes certain atmospheric factors. For example, as you're further up in the atmosphere, there are electronically charged particles known as ions that can have an impact on the signal. As you get closer to the earth, you have humidity and different atmospheric pressure that has an impact. And there's something called multipath, which is when the signal reflects off of different surfaces. Now for many use cases, like pulling up your navigation system on your phone and driving from point A to point B, being a couple meters off isn't a huge deal, but there are certain use cases that require a lot more precision. And that's where GeoNet comes into play because there's technology known as RTK or real-time kinematics. And the way this technology works is you put a base station down on Earth and it works in conjunction with these satellite systems and it corrects for that margin of error from those different factors that I just talked about. And it allows you to get within centimeter level accuracy. Now to this point, RTK has been very expensive to tap into and there's never been a ubiquitous network, but GeoNet is changing that. They're using a token incentive model, hence why it's a DPIN or a decentralized physical infrastructure network. And people all over the world are deploying these base stations to create a global RTK network. And they can do it at a fraction of what it would cost to normally tap into this RTK technology. And I would say it's working because GeoNet just surpassed 4,700 base stations deployed across 123 countries. And the network is already getting usage today and driving real revenue. Now, before I dig into some of these metrics, I want to talk about the total addressable market that GeoNet can tap into and highlight some of the use cases that are driving revenue into the project today. When looking at the total addressable market for GeoNet, there is a very sizable market for GeoNet to tap into. And when you look at location-aware IoT and mobile devices, that's a massive market. It is expected to grow to $1.38 trillion by 2026. That said, not all location-aware devices require the precision that GeoNet's RTK network provides. When you dial into the RTK-specific market, in 2023, it was a $3.1 billion industry. It is expected to grow to $4.8 billion by 2032. I do think that GeoNet has the potential to grab some substantial market share because again, there's never been a global network to tap into. And prior to this network, it's been very costly to tap into this technology. So not only do I think they can grab a substantial market share, I think that GeoNet could actually grow the potential RTK market above and beyond the projections that are in play today. That's because there are use cases that have been sidelined because they haven't had this type of network to tap into in the past. That said, I do want to highlight some of the use cases that are leveraging this network today starting with agriculture. Farmers are moving more and more to autonomous farming equipment, which requires extreme precision. Now these use cases include drainage, drip irrigation, land leveling, seeding, spraying, you name it. GeoNet also announced an integration with a company called Deep Sand Technology, and they provide automated tractor solutions. They also announced a partnership with Torbo Mower, which is an autonomous lawnmower for people like you and me. And I will say the precision definitely matters there because the last thing you want to do is put a Roomba lawnmower in your backyard that's bouncing all over the place. And I can guarantee it would not be very fun to have to explain to your wife why her garden is missing. The next category is autonomous vehicles. I don't think it's a secret to anyone that we are moving to a self-driving vehicle society. And the 
the difference between a couple meters and centimeter level accuracy absolutely makes a difference in that use case. Professional services are also a huge industry to tap into. And these include surveying, mapping, construction, and what a vertical I'm very familiar with because in a prior life, I worked in the drone service space in Washington, DC, and I managed the solar division. And we were doing thermal inspections on utility scale solar all over the world, topography surveys, rooftop measurements, and the drone service space is absolutely exploding right now. And the vast majority of those different services require RTK technology. I can tell you from personal experience, having a network to tap into like this is a complete game changer. And another use case is VR. Now, whether you like it or not, I think we are going to see more and more augmented reality in our lives. And that requires tight alignment between the virtual and the physical world. And having very precise location data like this RTK network provides is going to be absolutely critical for those use cases. All in all, there is a huge need for this type of network. And we are seeing that already with the revenue coming into the project. And well, that's what I'm going to talk about next. All right, let's look at the participation and not only on the network growth side, but participation in the usage of the network and the revenue trends that we're seeing. Now, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details of how to deploy a base station in this video, but GeoNet does have a really good tutorial on their YouTube page. That said, if you look on their website, you'll see that the base station is $695. Looks like there's about a six to eight week lead time at this point. But if you deploy this in a hex that has the maximum reward potential, you can bring in as much as 48 Geo tokens per day. It is worth noting that there is a having schedule and that's on an annual basis the next having event will happen on july 1st so that 48 per day will drop to 24 per day at that point and there are other factors in play like how much uptime you have but all of it is geared toward how much value you're bringing to the network with your deployment all right let's dig into some of the metrics when it comes to the growth of the network you'll see there are 4,778 miners found in the network today and if you look at this map there is very impressive coverage globally right now Zoom into Europe, all the way down in Africa, all over the world, they have base stations deployed. And the team has done a tremendous job of incentivizing people to deploy these so that they're not all on top of each other. And the ultimate goal to get global coverage here is to get to 100,000 base stations deployed. But to give you an idea of the type of growth that we're seeing, it was only 10 days ago that we reached the 4,500 milestone. So in roughly a week and a half, we've seen an additional 278 miners come online. So I think we're reaching this inflection point. And this is something we saw in the prior market cycle with Helium. When the bull run hit, they went from 15,000 hotspots deployed to nearly a million in an 18-month period. And one of the things I really like about this network specifically is that you don't need to get to a million base stations deployed. Because again, if they get to their goal of 100,000, they're going to have very good global coverage with this network. That said, even where we are today in the early stages, they are driving revenue. And it is the exact type of trend that you want to see. Case in point, if you go to the Dune Analytics page for GeoNet, you'll see the revenue is moving up every single month, going from 28,000 in November of 2023 to over $46,000 in February. And this is actual usage of the network. This is not equipment sales. Now we're only about halfway through the month here in March, but we are trending in the right direction for this month as well. This is exactly the type of thing that you want to see. And it is one of the few deep end projects that's driving real revenue today. I have to say this is very exciting, especially for an infrastructure play, because generally it takes a couple of market cycles to turn on revenue like this. And we're only about 5% of the way to their ultimate goal when it comes to deployments. So there's definitely a very bright future ahead in terms of revenue coming into the project. And in the tokenomics section, I'm going to show you how that revenue interacts with the GEO token and in a very transparent way on chain. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the team that's been executing behind the scenes. So when it comes to the team behind these projects, this is something that I think is critically important. I personally won't touch a project unless I know the team is doxxed and I can look at their work history and feel fully confident that they're able to execute. Because you can have a great idea and a great concept. You can drive a ton of participation, but if you don't have the execution to drive revenue and pull everything together, then none of that really matters. And to this point, I have been incredibly impressed with the execution of the GeoNet team. And as I dig into the background of the different team members here, it really shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. All right, here are the different profiles on their website, but I actually like to look at their LinkedIn and look at their full work history. So let's start off with Mike Horton. You see, he did go to Berkeley. Prior to his time at GeoNet, he worked in a lot of different verticals that have overlap with this project, IoT, cloud data analytics, and specifically drones, which I mentioned earlier. That's going to be a massive industry for GeoNet and him having that experience and understanding the drone space is going to be absolutely critical for them to continue driving revenue into this project. But I do have to say, this guy is super smart. If you watch any of the interviews that he's in, and if you read the white paper, which by the way, for me personally, anytime I'm going to invest in e-project, I very diligently read through the white paper. And for this project, their documentation is incredibly well thought out. Next is David 
Chen, who is heading up their Web3 development. It looks like he has education in computer science. He was a software engineer, and he's been in crypto and blockchain technology for over a decade. So obviously it makes sense to put him at the head of Web3 development. And lastly, you have Mr. Yi, who is also a co-founder of GeoNet. He's also worked with GNSS and LiDAR, and he has a vast education in geodetic science. I actually had to look up what geodetic science was, but it's the science of measuring the Earth's size, shape, orientation in space, and gravity. So I'd say between that and his background with GNSS, makes a ton of sense for this guy to be a co-founder of this project. But basically, every single one of these team members has the perfect background for this type of project, so it's no surprise that they've executed so well so far, and I have every reason to believe that that execution will continue and there's a very bright future ahead for GeoNet. All right, let's dig in to the tokenomics. Now, GeoNet is built on Polygon, which is a layer two solution for Ethereum. And I think that's part of the reason why we haven't seen all the hype that we've seen with some of the Solana-based deep end projects. But I don't think people are gonna be sleeping on it much longer because just last week, Ethereum had an upgrade specifically for layer two solutions. And we are starting to see some unprecedented levels of activity. But let's take a look at the distribution of tokens. So there is a max supply of 1 billion Geo tokens. You'll see 2% went to a public sale. There's 3% allocation of vendor and marketing and 10% to the ecosystem system comprising a total of 15%. There's a 25% allocation to each investors and the team. And one thing I really like about the team allocation is that it's not just on a set schedule. There are certain milestones that they have to hit in order to get token unlocked. So their unlock schedule is very much tied to the success of the project. And that's something I would really love to see in other deep end projects. And that leaves 35% to mining or people that are deploying these base stations. But the distribution schedule for these mining rewards is expected to take at minimum 10 years. So one of the things I want to highlight that's very different about the tokenomics with this project is that as revenue comes into the project, there is a burn mechanism in place. Whereas most deep end projects do remint and redistribute tokens, GeoNet is completely deflationary. So as those burns take place, they go into a burn wallet and they're taken out of the supply forever. And it's very transparent. And I'll show you exactly where you can see it on chain. So really the easiest way to get to this page is just by Googling Polygon Scan in GEOD. And it is the top result that will be returned on a Google search. And on Polygon Scan, you can see a number of metrics. For one, the max total supply is 1 billion GEO tokens. See there are 8,772 holders. And the price as I record this is 22 cents. But I do want to dial into the holder section. So as we scroll down, you click on holders here. And as you scroll down, you'll see there's a wallet, number 16 here where it says dead. This is the burn wallet. So as you see here, 4.91 million tokens have been burned. And this is a result of revenue coming into the project. From a percentage standpoint, that's nearly a half a percent. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but remember, we are still very early in this project. And these are tokens that we burned out of the supply forever. So as more revenue comes into the project, more and more tokens will go into that burn wallet and the token will become more scarce. So I'm really interested to see as this network grows, as the revenue grows, and more and more of these tokens are burned out of the supply, what type of impact that will have for the value of token holders and network participants. So in summary, there's a ton of utility for this type of network and a huge need. And they're bringing a solution that's never existed before by building a global RTK network that people are now able to tap into and at a fraction of what it would normally cost to leverage this RTK technology. And the revenue trends that we're seeing already in the early stages of this project is very impressive. The team that's executing behind the scenes has the perfect background for this type of project. And I do love the fact that they have this token burn that's very transparent on chain. And these are the exact things that I'm looking for when I'm investing in a project. But again, nothing in this video is financial financial advice, you should always do your own research. If you did like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. As always, I appreciate your viewership. Signing off, this is Bradley Meyer with the Deep End Connection.